praise the lord dear friends welcome to the study and reflections on miracles as signs as reported in the bible we have been going through the miracles narrated in the gospel according to john we have seen the gospel is divided into two parts the first part chapter 12 chapters presented as the book of signs and the second part as book of glory now we come to the seventh sign the last of the signs in the book of signs that's in chapter 11 this is the longest narration so in 54 verses the story is narrated in various scenes it's the raising of lazarus it has is presented into in seven scenes the first in chapter 11 verses 1 to 6 is the illness of lazarus and the request of the, of the sisters to jesus to heal him the second scene verses 7 to 16 tells about lazarus death and jesus decision to go to bethany the third scene chapter 11 verses 17 to 27 Jesus meets Martha discusses and Martha as declaration of faith the fourth scene 28 to 37 Jesus meets Mary and weeps at the tomb the fifth scene the climax of it is Jesus prayer Jesus raises Lazarus that is 38 to 44 now comes the anti climax in 45 to 53 the Jewish Sanhedrin decides to kill jesus because he is considered as a threat to the entire judaism the sanhedrin meets and decides to kill and then the epilogue 54 to 57 jesus goes into hiding and the people look for him so in the seven scenes presented uh, jesus as the life life entering into the realm of death and bringing the dead person back to life So this is the longest narrative this is a conflict between life and death in the chapter 9 we saw the conflict between light and darkness now jesus is presented as the light and life of the world the light that enlightens the light that gives life so jesus the life of the world is now giving life to a person who was dead and buried for four days and this also a kind of anticipation of what would happen with his death and resurrection jesus risen on the third day now let us read step by step 
first to see in is chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. So this is the first scene. The characters are presented. Lazarus, Martha and Mary, all three are friends of Jesus. And they are living in Bethany. Bethany is a village um, northeast of, Bethel, of Jerusalem, about three kilometers. Now, if you go to visit Jerusalem, you'll see Bethany and you see the empty tomb of Lazarus there. So, in the Gospel of Luke also, we see Jesus coming to visit Martha and Mary. So, they uh, were uh, a kind of house friends of Jesus. Jesus and disciples used to come to them, so they were friends. And this situation, Lazarus becomes ill. Lazarus, is the name also, also is symbolic. There is only one name in the entire parables Jesus told, that is Lazarus. Lazarus comes to the word Eli Ezer, God my help. God is my help. In Malayalam we say Deva Sahayam, God helps. So the name itself is a confession of God's help. And this person is ill and Jesus knows that he is ill, but he doesn't go. And he said because through him or through his death and raise, resurrection, raising, God's glory would be manifested. So the declaration of Jesus, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified. So Jesus knows that he will die and he will be dead. And Jesus also knows that the death will not be the end. He will be raised from the dead. And that will be the manifestation of God's power, love, concern, compassion, and manifestation of God's glory. So he stayed there. That's the first thing. The second scene, verses 7 to 16. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you. And are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night, at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. In the second scene, the decision to go to Bethany. We have seen in the chapter 9, the objection of the Jewish leaders was becoming stronger and they wanted to kill him. And in chapter 10, it is said they tried to stone him and then he went away. Now, Jesus was away from Jerusalem, away from Bethany, and now he wants to come back. And the disciples are afraid to go to Jerusalem because there is a great danger awaiting them. But Jesus is ready to face. Now, the Tao of Friend Lazarus is asleep. Jesus is referring to death asleep. He said sleeping. He's going to awaken. But even otherwise, what is death, for example? We all die. And we think that is the end of it. But Jesus tells death is not the end. The moment you die, somehow you part from this world, from this body. 
But it's not your end. You are entering into a new phase of life without body, but you are your own self. So we call it a, a sleep, a sleep for, awake, for awakening. So the body sleeps, or so the body is, is um, somehow dissolved in the earth, but the body will rise again. So we are, when we call about eternal sleep, it's only referring to the waiting for the resurrection. But even though the body is dissolved in the earth, the person is not ended. And we believe that the person, the moment of death, enters into the eternal life. And that's what Jesus said. He's asleep. I'm going to awaken him. Now, so the raising of Lazarus is only a, a pointer, indication that life does not end with death. Now, the fear of the apostles and the decision or the courage of St. Thomas is presented here. When people, all the other, other disciples are discouraging Jesus from going to Jerusalem, Thomas says, let us also go and die with him. Let us go with him, that is the first. And if he, if he dies, let us also die with him. So a commitment of life and death. So there is no way of turning back. That is the courage of the apostle and the apostle who, was, who came to our land in India and this promise or this uh, challenge was taken up and died as a martyr. And we know all the apostles finally ended up as martyrs. Going with Jesus is going to the cross, but through the cross to the resurrection, to the new life. So now they go. So they decide to go with Jesus and comes to the third scene. The third scene is the theological interpretation of what is happening here. That is the encounter of Jesus with Martha, 17 to 21. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of our, of the, on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. That's a confession of Martha. So the discussion is about life and death. Martha is speaking about the death and the resurrection at the end of the world. So there was a um, dispute among Jews, the two opinions. The Pharisees believed that there will be a resurrection of the dead. And the Sadducees believed there will be no resurrection of the dead. So the two opinions were there. And here Martha is representing the Pharisaic opinion that there will be a resurrection of the dead, but that will be the end of the world. And she is telling, I know that they will rise and my brother will rise on the last day. But then Jesus goes on to say what this life and what resurrection is. I am the resurrection and life. As a solemn revelation of Jesus. Jesus revealed to Martha. And we, when we compare this with, um, with the story in chapter 10 of Luke where Martha and Mary um, is receiving Jesus at their home and Martha is very busy with, with the um, duty of the host and Mary was just sitting quiet at the feet of Jesus. Martha came and said, Master, aren't you, uh, don't you see that my sister has um, said, let me alone to do all this work. Ask her to come and help me. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are busy with too many things. Only one thing is necessary. And Mary has chosen the best part and it will not be taken away from her. So Martha has grown quite far from there. Now she can have a theological discussion with Jesus and it comes to the confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. So a, law, a growth in faith. May Martha, as an exemplary disciple who 
proclaims her faith in Jesus as son of God. Now, then the, the, third, the fourth part is the encounter with Mary, 28 to 37. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and call, is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up and got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? So that is the, the encounter of Jesus with Mary, and the only place where it is said Jesus wept, disturbed the pain, the suffering, the participation in the suffering of the others. And Jesus is the manifestation, the compassion of God, a God who can feel, a God who can weep, a God who can love, joy and sadness, is not alien to God. He's not an insensitive being. Here, God manifests himself in Jesus as a person who cares, as a person who loves and participates in the joy and suffering, pain and sadness of the people. Now, the next scene, 38 to 44, where the miracle is reported. Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you, if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with the strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is the report of the miracle. Jesus comes and he prays. And the prayer of Jesus is a model. Jesus knows that his prayer is heard. And it's also said, when you pray, if you know that your prayer is being heard, it is already heard. So pray with faith, conviction, that God is your father and will give you whatever is needed, and the prayer will be heard if it is according to his will. So the model of Jesus' prayer, so the prayer is a thanksgiving rather than petition. I thank you for you having heard me. So Jesus knows that his prayer is being heard, but to make it manifest, he tells the Father, send, gives life to Lazarus, and the word enters the world of the dead, and the dead man comes to life. This is a sign that Jesus is the source of life. He has the power to bring the dead back to life. In the Gospels, we have three cases of the dead being raised to life. We have the, the daughter of Jairus being raised to life immediately after her death. We have the son of the widow of Nain raised to, to life when he is being carried to the tomb. And now there's a person who was in the tomb for four days raised to life. So... Jesus is a source of life. He is the one who brings life. And this is the sign that he is 
the one who gives us life eternal so now jesus presents himself as the light as the law and the one who gives life and the command unbind him let him go can have many levels of meaning the first of all it is a kind of that is how the jews buried their dead uh, binding them with the strips of cloth and this has to be unbind so that this person can stand up and go but this more this person is given freedom unbind him jesus wants everybody to be free he came to proclaim liberty to the captives freedom to the bound, those who are bound all sorts of bondage has to be removed the bondage of sin and death whatever so the person who encounters jesus will become a free person nothing can bind him back so now this is how jesus manifested who he was who he is and what he brings now the anti climax what happened to this the next two scenes comes as a response many of the jews therefore who had come with mary and had seen what jesus did believed in him but some of them went to the pharisees and told them what he has done so the chief priests and the pharisees called a meeting of the council and said what are we to do this man is performing many signs if we let him go on like this everyone will believe in him and the romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation so here a, the supreme council the council sanhedrin is meeting here to discuss what to do with jesus jesus who has brought a dead person to life so jesus is presented as a threat why if a person comes to life is it not something to praise god no they consider jesus as a threat as an enemy as a danger because they think everybody will go after jesus and what will happen they are afraid of losing their position as the religious leaders and they say when everybody goes after jesus then romans will come why because the sanhedrin and the jewish leaders were somehow subservient to the romans and the romans they were living there with the help of the romans and if jesus take with some as a revolutionary the people will go after jesus and there will be a revolution rebellion against rome a revolt and rome will destroy is that all what they mean we don't know anyhow one thing is important one is interesting to note what the sanhedrin decides now one of them caiphas who was the high priest that year said to them you know nothing at all you do not understand that it is better for you to have one man die for the people than to have the whole nation destroyed he is ready to kill a person so that the nation will be saved that is what he meant politically but john tells us this was a prophecy he said he did not say this on his own but being high priest that year he prophesied that jesus was about to die for the nation and not for the nation only but to gather into one the dispersed children of god so from that day they planned to put him to death that is how the story of the raising of lazarus ends that was the last sign the seventh sign now comes the book of glory how jesus is being glorified through his passion death and resurrection now to sum up what we are seeing in this here jesus presents himself as the life and shows the authenticity that the truth of it by raising a person who was dead and buried for four days this should have brought faith and life to the people the people were happy but the leaders were not somehow the more jesus reveals himself the greater the fear of the jewish authorities wonder why they have their own preconceived ideas about god they have preconceived ideas about god's plan for them and the laws religion has become not a source not a means of liberty but of captivity of bondage and the leaders felt themselves by the the laws to keep the people under these laws of their own interpretation the two types of looking at god what jesus presents and what the jewish religious leaders and this is a great danger every time in our own day the freedom of the children of god that jesus brings and the systematic uh, legislative legalistic 
order and structure the religious leaders are making, they come into conflicts. Jesus wants people to be free and the religious leaders want them to be obedient. And, why, and then they somehow forget that we are all children of God and what God gives is life. And maybe unknowingly we become instruments of darkness and death in the name of religion and religious laws. It's a great danger that the religious authority, the Sanhedrin, encountered. And finally, when Jesus proclaims himself as the Son of God, they declare him a criminal, a blasphemer, a false prophet, and condemns him to death. So that is the danger. See the conflict between light and darkness, between life and death, and we have to stand, opt, to stand with the light, to stand with the life. And so that we stand with God, with Jesus, and he gives us life, he gives us light. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son into this world of darkness, of sin and death, to bring us life, to bring us light, to bring us freedom as you are children. Father, enable us to understand your son. Enable us to respond to him, to your call positively. Send us your spirit, illumine our hearts, strengthen our spirits. Give us the courage to stand up as a blind man did and stand and speak for you, speak with you, to be with you. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.